What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about the esports bubble. This is something I've been tweeting about for a while and ever since the Overwatch League and the Call of Duty League and all of these other things started popping up, I've been really concerned with the fact that these leagues are going to go on for a few years and then either shut down or dramatically downscale. Now, allegedly there have been some Overwatch League layoffs with the Microsoft acquisition. That's a rumor. I don't know if that's true or not, but, uh, these esports leagues are absurdly expensive to run. There's a massive difference in the cost between a persistent esports league where you're employing a bunch of people year round, healthcare year round, versus paying you know people a few hundred bucks every weekend to put together something. Uh, there's a massive difference in the cost, and I think there's a lot of dumb money in esports. Uh, a lot of you know big time. Big money people are seeing the eyeballs that are on esports right now and throwing absurd amounts of money at it uh, in a way that, that really doesn't make sense. Um, it's almost like the uh, acquire user base question mark profit meme of tech companies where it's like, yeah, you have a bunch of users, but you're just losing money out the ass on these users. So um, Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, and that makes me really wonder what changes, if any, are going to happen to the CDL in particular, but also the Overwatch League. Overwatch 2 is going to be coming out at some point. That will give the game a massive bump. You know, whether you like Overwatch or not, Overwatch sold like 100 million copies, something outrageous. Overwatch 2, probably going to be pretty good when it eventually ever does come out. Who knows? Um, CDL, on the other hand, I'm pretty worried about. They can't make a good Call of Duty game to save their life. In terms of a good, like, 6v6 pub game, they haven't made one in years. And who cares about the CDL if the game is terrible? Call of Duty Vanguard is fucking awful. I am not optimistic about their next game. I think they've lost their mojo. And <clears throat> the thing of it is, is that Call of Duty in particular, it doesn't matter how competitive the game, how good the game is competitively. If the game is not fun from a public lobby perspective, like for just the average Joes, if the game's not fun to just get into some TDM and have, you know, a good time after work, people aren't going to care about the competitive. They don't care about the game in general. They aren't going to care about the competitive part of the game. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a mat, uh, the CDL I have no, I think has no future unless they turn the game around. And uh, I was watching a bunch of podcasts from uh, Optic Nade Shot, and I guess he's not Optic Nade Shot anymore, that's old habit, uh, from Nade Shot and Hex. These are uh, old Optic guys. I guess one of them, Hex, is an Optic guy still. But they each paid $25 million for a CDL slot. I wonder if they want their money back, because all they do is bitch about the CDL being terrible. And to be honest, it is terrible. Uh, I don't know anybody in this. I don't know a single player in the CDL. I also don't really know any Overwatch pros either, except for the standouts like Sinatra and Jonak and uh, I guess Pine, but I think he retired. Like the you know, there's a few that that kind of stand out, but unless you like really keep track of it, you know, these guys aren't you know popping out of that little ecosystem, right? It's not like Steph Curry where it's like I know who that is. Or uh, the Greek freak, uh, whatever that guy. Like, it's not like NBA, or it's not like uh, Tom Brady, where you see all these people outside. Like, even if you're not paying attention to Overwatch, you still hear about them. You don't. That's not the case at all. Do any of you guys know a single CDL player? It's like the WNBA. You can't name a player in the CDL. So uh, it's a hard problem to solve because, uh, dude, I don't know. It's it, esports in particular has a big issue because uh, it, it's a it's a pretty low barrier to entry in uh, compared to normal sports. There are many more Shroud-like talents in the world than there are Shaquille O'Neal-style talents in the world, which means that these esports teams have a lot of churn. There's constantly new people on Cloud9, constantly new people on the, you know, Toronto Defiant or whatever esports team because... You know, some players are better in certain metas. Some players are better in certain games. Uh, the metas of these games change so much compared to the metas of sports. You know, the metas of basketball, the meta of basketball hasn't changed that much. Yeah, the three-point line dominates, but, you know, for the most part, the game is pretty similar, you know, especially year after year. Like, the game evolves over a long period of time. And you have 
staple players of certain rosters. You know, LeBron James was on the you know Cleveland Cavaliers for a long time. Then he went to the Heat. You know, LeBron or uh, Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls, Kobe Bryant played for the Lakers his entire career. You know, there's some some like staple names that play for certain teams, and you can identify the players to the teams and get invested in the team. It's very hard to get invested in anything when it's like, all right. This guy's on this team, now he's on this team, now he's not in the league anymore, and he's streaming, now he's back in the league, now he's not in the league, now he's playing semi-pro. It's it's all over the place. And uh, new people are coming up all the time, again, because the barrier to entry is so so low, and the game meta changes so much that you can't, qu- you can't possibly stay on top of it all of the time. Um, this was uh, incredibly apparent during the Overwatch GOATS era, where we had the best Tracer players in the world playing Brig. Uh, that's crazy when the best, you know, DPS hit scam players are playing Brigitta, a character that I hit fucking masters with that I didn't know what I was doing because he's just swing, 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 shield bash. It, it was awful. Nobody wanted to watch that garbage. This would be the equivalent of the NBA removing the three point line for an entire season. Like, it's going to fuck everything up. So, um, that's my rant on kind of the, the actual internals of the, the gameplay and the, and the viewing experience. But another thing is that these leagues are outrageously expensive. you got to keep in mind that it, it is so much more expensive to run a league with salaried employees that have benefits and healthcare and all that stuff compared to a one-time, one, one-weekend event where everybody's contracted or you just throw somebody a few hundred bucks and he helps you cast the thing or you do it online. These leagues and events have to make so much money to even break even, even a little bit. And when the, and the, and the general rule of thumb is that, Oh, well we lose money on these esports, but we make it back with the, the publicity against the game and people buy the esports skins and whatnot. That may be true if you have a massive esport like Dota and League of Legends and the game is like popping off and doing really well. But Overwatch, like, dude, people are not buying Overwatch skins. I'm sorry. When is the last time somebody bought a fucking Overwatch skin loot box? Like, dude, I have so many of the Overwatch tokens or I just don't give a damn. I don't even open the loot boxes anymore. Um, so I don't really care about that. I have all the stuff I, I really want. And Call of Duty, like, nobody cares about fucking Call of Duty Vanguard. Uh, again, nobody cares about Call of Duty 6. Like, Warzone is cool. People like Warzone, but that's not competitive Call of Duty. That's not the CDL. Uh, they got a Call of Duty. No, really, nobody gives a fuck about that. I'm sorry. I wish I did. I, re- I really did used to like the game. Now, um, now let's break on to the next point. The, the actual esports players themselves how many of them have made it how many esports guys do you know that have made it and it's like year after year you can count on them competing and being there and being in the scene and being relevant Uh, you get you have a list now how many of those are purely based off their own skill Uh, i guess you've got like some of those league of legends guys like the faker types where it's like those guys are constantly relevant because of their skill but the thing is, is that most of these esports guys are not purely competitors. They are entertainers, businessmen, they stream, they're like funny on YouTube or, or what. They got other stuff going on that keeps them relevant. And this is another factor in the churn. Not all of these esports competitors are entertainers. And to be honest, you kind of have to be. There are very, very few people that can remain relevant and can justify a brand and a team picking them up purely based off of their own skill because uh the the dirty little secret is it's not entirely about your skill you have to be marketable for your team and for your sponsors uh and again like the cdl i'm sure there's some great call of duty players in the cdl but does anyone give a fuck about a single cdl player besides skump and the other guys that are the entertainers that they're invested in like no nobody gives a fuck uh, so again, it is very hard for the leagues to, how, how are, how are you as a league supposed to build up, you know, the Miami or the Chicago bulls and the rivalries when nobody cares about any of the players and the teams, you know, people are switching teams all the time or multiple teams a year. 
it, it's tough. It, it's a really tough situation. And then the league itself is so ex- ex- exorbitantly expensive to run. They are not making money off these leagues. You might see a few sponsors here and there, but like compared to the salaries they play the they pay the players, they pay the staff, all the production, the middlemen, the guys that the lawyers. Like there's so much that goes into these actual leagues that doesn't go into the little uh, little events, and that's where we're gonna go to next. Who is doing it right? Who's doing it right for the long term? That is the fighting game community. They've always been doing it right since the beginning. They've been doing it right, but the fighting game community is doing it right for the long term. Most of the tournaments are grassroots tournaments with very, very low overhead. They're run online or they're run locally to where uh, everybody kind of just shows up and it's it, it kind of has like a more organic feel to it. But for the most part, they're cheap to run. You know, they throw a caster, you know, maybe, maybe a few thousand bucks to the, some of the, the, the few good casters. They get some good uh, guys that know how to, you know, run the... Uh, production and whatnot they just pay all these guys you know one time no benefits like no like crazy expensive overhead and they run the events and the thing with fighting games is the the communities and the personalities actually can develop across different games and people are better at certain games and a lot of the uh a lot of the players play different games so it's like this guy is really good at the and this is keep in mind guys this is coming from a guy that is not a fighting game player i'm not really that invested in fighting games but To be honest, it's probably one of my favorite things to watch because the community around it is so good. Now, part of it is they have an unfair advantage. Fighting games are a 1v1 game, so it's much more personal. The rivalries are uh, much more likely to happen. You don't have to worry about team switching and uh, all of that nonsense. And uh, everybody can kind of make their own way to the tournament. You don't have to rely on five or six other people to all get there. Logistically, it is much uh, much easier to pull off. But the thing with the FGC is that they also have big events. They have big events every now and then too. So you don't have that burnout. The thing with like uh, the HCS and the CDL and uh, again, HCS, another one, dude, like I don't know any Halo players. Like who are the fucking competitive Halo players? I don't know. They're boring. Not nothing has happened that has been exciting. And I'm, I'm on the Halo subreddit. I play Halo Infinite a lot. I'm, a, a cunt hair away from Onyx. Like I play the game. I am the I am the target audience, and I don't know a single player. It's crazy. But anyway, sorry tangent. Um, there are so many matches with Overwatch League and HCS and CDL that it's hard to not get burned out on it. That you can't follow it. There's just so much there. But again, with the fighting game community, they do those those big events are not frequent. So it's like, oh man, I gotta go check out Evo. Like fuck yeah. Um, or the Smash Melee tournaments where there's like this build up to it. It's it's pretty great. Um, and the same thing goes with Overwatch. There was a time where I was playing Overwatch every day, you know, when the game first came out and it was all hype and before people discovered goats, basically. Uh, I was all about it. You know, I even have a, I had a friend that worked for the Overwatch League. I have all of the Overwatch League t-shirts, all of the team t-shirts in my closet right now. Like I was fucking sick, right? Uh, everybody was hyped about it, but even then, even at my most hyped, I couldn't really follow it because goddamn, there was a lot. Like it was just a lot going on, a lot of teams, a lot of stuff. And I guess that's cool if you're a fan, but like, uh, how much realistically can people watch? I don't know. So, um, I think the leagues and these massive esports. I think this will eventually become a thing. I don't want to be super negative. I think eventually we will have these. NFL, NBA style leagues. There will be enough gamers on planet Earth. Because that's the thing. There are more and more gamers every year because people don't quit playing until we reach that critical mass where like old gamers are dying like at, a, at the same rate that they're being replaced. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Like I'm not going to... You don't really age out of video games, really. You kind of just don't play as much or you just keep playing the same. Um, so eventually there will be enough of an audience for these massive leagues to exist, but I just think it's too soon. Uh, I don't think the, the corporate money is there yet. I don't think the eyeballs are there yet. Nobody watches the CDL, uh, and the Overwatch league. I mean, unless they play that thing on Overwatch two, which they said they will, nobody's going to give a fuck about that. Uh, there probably will be a bunch of people that watch it if it's played on the Overwatch 2 map. And I don't know, who the fuck knows? Dude, there's so much craziness going on. I am so curious what Microsoft is going to do. Uh, if they, I do think the Overwatch League can turn it around. 
I think uh, I think the Overwatch League, when Overwatch 2 comes out, they will absolutely have a chance to uh, basically start over um, because I think that game there's a very good chance that game will be at least serviceable. But fucking Call of Duty, dude. I don't think they can make a good game to save their life. I think they've lost the they've lost what makes Call of Duty fun for your average um, player. Like, I don't know. They, I don't think they get it anymore. So, it's up to Microsoft now. What will they do? I don't know. But I am uh, super interested. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about the the sheer amount of esports right now. Like, there's just so much in general. There's a lot of saturation here. And uh, I, I just don't, I don't know if it's necessarily needed. <laughs>